street. Um, but uh, and we can talk where we think things are going. Um, if that's something that interests everybody, or uh, if you have any questions right now, if you want to just hear this a little bit, but please feel free to jump in. Anybody? I think uh, the thing to remember in SPA, we, we tend to uh, we tend to uh, not ignore it, but um, really only accept a claim uh, for work that's done within Canada when it's been acclaimed by somebody outside of Canada. Um, and I, I think there have been you know, countless examples of that. And if, you go to, if you go to Los Angeles, you know, it's, it's, it's a joke that LA is probably Canada's second largest city. Because you know, really in Los Angeles. And that's a great thing. And, and, and we're now at a situation within, within the film industry uh, within Canada where you no longer have to try and fight with the $220 million dreamer speeches if you want to try and create something that is more, uh, uh, more personal, more unique. There are ways to get funding. Uh, Telefilm uh, is, is really focusing uh, a lot more on trying to, trying to um, energize uh, uh, smaller uh, productions. See a little Irish film that was made uh, last year called uh, Book of Kells. Mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. that was all done in Flash. And that was uh, a budget of uh, about around 100. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny because we get. Uh, sure, it looks at Bell film. It's a French film that was also uh, worked on here. Yeah, it's just a huge, uh, yeah, actually, a huge number of Canadians who also went elsewhere to work on that. But it was Bell that was a. And, and the illusion is to follow up film yes. right now. Canadian talent on that film is, 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 is staggering. Uh, a lot of them didn't have to go overseas to the second one, but a lot of the triples was done right here. Um, there is a new feature market opening up. As things get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're seeing these blockbuster films in 3D and everything, what's also creating is that not everything can be a 3D film, a 3D movie, a blockbuster. And I think the recognition that we saw last year with Secret of the Kells getting nominated for an Oscar, um, and that there was some variety in the feature films that came out of the last couple of years, uh, as, as Mr. Fox, uh, Coraline, um, not just your, your standard Disney fare, um, that audience are, audiences now are prepared to pay, to pay for, for, for a ticket to something that isn't a Disney movie. Um, Kells is a bit of a different story because it didn't get major distribution until after it got the Oscar nom. Um, but I think what we're seeing is that there, I mean, and, and in Hollywood terms, when you talk about a, a $40 million budget, that's a low budget film. That's like you know, that's Tom Hanks doing the voice in the first Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but what we're seeing is that, I mean, but Sam is trying to raise $8 million. Um, and even there, I look at it and go, damn, $8 million bucks. Like, what you can get, what you can do for $8 million. Um, there are distributors now who are starting to look at these films. There's a place for them to end up. And here in Canada, we have the we have access to funding that can get it in the first place. There's a system out there that, ha that the map hasn't quite been drawn yet. Um, because the, media, the funding organizations are shifting and changing. We've got the Canadian Media Fund in Canada, which is they have only set of guidelines this year, and it's, this is a great year to be getting in, in touch with them because they don't even know yet what they're going to say yes to. They don't have their rules yet. Um, you go to the next year with something unusual, they may already be able to be in a position to say no. Uh, but right now, it's wide open. The territory is great, and they are putting forth this open door policy. They'll, they'll happily have a conversation with you uh, about what you're doing and see if it fits with, with one of their programs. Um, so there is this uh, amazing opportunity right now. So like, guys like Sam, who are looking to make feature films, and this is becoming more and more prevalent as well, because TV, TV is great, a great way to make a living. You have to realize that you're operating in a box that is TV animation. Um, you, the only thing you're responsible for is delivery. Just, I, I, I say this ad nauseum. Um, and it's, 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 yeah, you get into this business because you want to make cartoons, you want to draw pictures, you want to make art, but the only responsibility you have as a producer, an artist, whatever it is, is delivery. The network, you go further and further up the chain of the network, and what they call cartoons, things we put on between commercials. And that's their job, that's okay. That, to an artist, sounds terrible. That sounds like the worst thing you could possibly say. But I have absolute respect for that, because that's, they know what their job is. Hopefully they, they pay someone down the line whose job it is to give, give a shit about the cartoon. But make no, make no mistake, you're, making, you're, you're working in a commercial medium. Um, the joke sort of in the industry is when you're, someone's working on a show and they're complaining, oh, it's crap. Well, it's all crap. It's just how, how good can you make the crap? How much do you want to put into it in that box? Which is a, on the surface sounds negative, but you know, 
<laughs> you can still find a way to make art in, the, in, in, in this industry. And it's, it's a, like the sandbox is only so big, though. The only thing you're responsible for is getting it out the door. But if you can make art within that sandbox and playing, that's great. Features are a little different. Features are, 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 are I, I think, personally, are a way that we're going to get to see um, independent, independent, distinctive directors really get to run and play with what they're doing. Um, just by the nature of, 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 of the beast, if you're not looking for advertising at all in the same way. If your responsibilities are different in a feature than they are in, a, in the distribution channels for independent feature films. It's radically changed in the last few years uh, with, with the uh, services uh, where you can download uh, films as opposed to spending the extra cash to, uh, to have a DVD release uh, that uh, costs considerable amount of money to do. You no longer need to have it released theatrically. Uh, and in the next five years or so, more and more theaters across North America are going to be digital projection systems as well. And that's a, a massive idea that's going on right across the country. So you won't have to spend on that. You won't have to spend the, the, seven, the 17 cents a foot to get a film transferred to 35 million, which you know, doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, a 35 million <laughs> film is an hour and a half more. 17 cents a foot, that's you know, 40,000 feet. It's, uh, it adds up. It's a lot of money. And that, that's, that's, print. Print. that's per print. So that, that you don't that that aspect of the distribution is not as is not as prevalent now as it was five years ago. <coughs> you know, it's going to be even less because now if we can take a hard drive to a theater in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and expect their entire high definition film to play it in the projector. You know, so the the, the the cost for doing these things are drastically dropping. They're dropping every year, uh, which is why I think. Film market uh, right now in Canada is one that excites me. Um, I mean, you, you see a film called Nine that was uh, done. I mean, that was it was originally um, Stars Animation came on board uh, partly through the production to, to help them finish. But what they did is virtually redid the entire film mm -hmm. yeah, for ten million dollars. Yeah. That was a ten million dollar production, and it was you know yes there are story flaws, but there are story flaws in a lot of feature films, but it was a brilliantly executed film. And they found ways to use their talent and the process and, and, and their technology to make a really good really film. Um, and they're going to continue to do that. Uh, and, and I think that is a, a really good sort of grounding point and a, an example for other uh, small studios that may want to go into this, this marketing. And so I worked on one of Canada's last feature films, this uh, Nutcracker Prince back in 1989. And that was a very different industry at that time. It was all traditional, all in film, blah, blah, blah. And, and it was an $8 million production. Um, but for $8 million now, it's uh, so much bigger. That's so so much back, <clears throat> back then, in the climate, it was a, a fe everybody seemed to want to make a feature. Every studio that came along in Canada wanted to make a feature. And they were generally considered, after a few of them got done, to be the, ki the, the studio killer. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I mean, enough time has passed and things have changed enough. I really believe in feature films as a way to. Create, to create an industry again. And they don't have to be 3D. I mean, they can no. be whatever. I mean, uh, and as you said, you know, Fantastic Mr. Fox was a very good example of what you can do with, with low tech. Uh, it's all about story. It really is. And, and, that, and that also translates into the television world because, you know, yes, you have this box um, that uh, you know, is a constraint. But the nice thing about constraints uh, is, I think, anyway, that a constraint is something that you constantly want to fight against. Constantly wanting to try, want to try to find ways to work with the material that you have to uh, to break those constraints, not not destroy them, but you know find ways to bend them. And you, you find some really unique shows that will come out of that. Uh, like a good example is the one that Nerd Corp did, uh, um, League of League of uh, League of Super Evil. Evil. I mean, it's a very silly show, and, and it, it's it's kind of fluffy, but I think they used uh, the constraints uh, to their advantage and made a really nice. 3D animated TV series, which is a very difficult thing to do. I mean, 3D animation takes a long time to, it's, it's a very complicated pipeline, especially if you're trying to do a half hour or two weeks or whatever it is to be. And they did a really good job at creating something that is, you know, has been very, very successful. Yeah. Uh, and they're a small studio, and, and, and you know, they're, they're having a lot of fun doing it. So there are, I mean, even within those constraints, and, you know, you know, the creative side of me wanting to see, you know, more interesting things on television, at the same time, there are more interesting more so now than even five years ago. And, and there's, there's a lot of talent that left Canada um, 
that is now coming back and trying to find ways to mentor the next generation. It's also really exciting. Um, questions? I, would, I don't know if it's a too big of a question. I was thinking about um, Creative Commons licensing and how do you guys see that affecting Canadian animation or independent way? filmmakers? Mm, maybe changing um, branching out to different ideas because you're not going to have to answer to a producer or a, you know or a network or anything like that. You're just creating your own films, putting them out there. Creative Commons licensing, you know, like the um, Sea to Sings the Blues, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where everybody has, and it's just such a fabulous little film. Um, you see I really that, like that growing bigger and bigger, or I hope so. And, I think and there's room for all of it. Really, what it comes down to. Um, we see the things that lose, we've seen, and, and that's actually that's a tough one to touch because it does actually create a lot of uh, uh, a lot of heated d debate um, in terms of how she's. Yeah, maybe attack it on YouTube. Yeah, well, <laughs> not too Because I mean, yeah, I mean, like she, she got a lot of flack for for turning down some of the distribution deals. Well, she couldn't because of her music. She oh, okay, she, she, she didn't actually own the rights to, to it all. It's, okay. I, I spent a little bit of time in New York in the fall, and it's even within within that community there's a lot of debate over. Um, Sort of what the where her missteps were and how she's actually maybe benefiting. Yeah, it's 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 somewhat political in its own way. But I think but I think what we really there's room for everything today. Um, I would love to see. I mean, in live action, you look at you look at in, in the states and in live action where um, distributors, producers, they go to these small festivals and they they, they, they look for who the next directors are going to be. Um, they look for who, who, who's making short films and who and we can we can move up other things. It doesn't happen in animation. I'm shocked that. Uh, it's a place like Lionsgate in Vancouver, who are now big, big, they're, they're a big studio. Why they aren't at all these festivals seeing who the directors here are, because you need a Canadian director if you want access to funding, you need certain, all this Canadian 